Listening fill in the blanks. Let's start. With freak weather conditions, arguably caused by global warming, frequently in the headlines, the urgent need to get fuel cell vehicles will be available in most showrooms. Even now, fuel cell buses are operating in the U.S., while in Germany a courier company is planning to take delivery of fuel cell-powered vans in the near future. The fact that centrally run fleets of buses and vans are the first fuel cell vehicles identifies another challenge fuel distribution. The refueling facilities necessary to top up hydrogen-powered vehicles are available only in a very few places at present. Public transport and delivery firms are logical places to start since their vehicles are operated from central depots. Monday mornings have a double helping of stress for the working body as it makes a rapid transition from sleep to activity and from the relaxing weekend to the pressures of work. When people get up, their blood pressure and heart rate go up and there are hormonal changes in their bodies, Willich explained. All these things can have an adverse effect in the blood system and increase the risk of a clot in the arteries which will cause a heart attack. When people return to work after a weekend off, the pace of their life changes. They have a higher workload, more stress, more anger and more physical activity, said Willich. We need to know how these events cause changes in the body before we can understand if they cause heart attacks. It has long been known that the first 1,000 days of life are the most critical in ensuring a person's healthy future. Precisely what happens during this period to any individual has been less well documented. To allocate resources appropriately, public health and education policies need to be based upon quantifiable data, so the New Zealand Ministry of Social Development began a longitudinal study of these early days, with the view to extending it for two decades. Born between March 2009 and May 2010, the 6,846 babies recruited came from a densely populated area of New Zealand, and it is hoped they will be followed until they reach the age of 21. Cargill Dow turns the unrefined dextrose into lactic acid using a fermentation process similar to that used by beer and wine producers. This is the same lactic acid that is used as a food additive and is found in muscle tissue in the human body. Through a special condensation process, a lactide is formed. This lactide is purified through vacuum distillation and becomes a polymer, the base for NatureWorks PLA, that is ready for use through a solvent-free melt process. Development of this new technology allows the company to harvest the carbon that living plants remove from the air through photosynthesis. Carbon is stored in plant starches, which can be broken down into natural plant sugars. The carbon and other elements in these natural sugars are then used to make NatureWorks PLA. The race is on for the ultimate goal of renewable energy, electricity production at prices that are competitive with coal-fired power stations, but without coal's pollution. Some new technologies, are aiming to be the first to push coal from its position as Australia's chief source of electricity. At the moment the front-runner in renewable energy is wind technology. According to Peter Bergen of Australian Hydro, one of Australia's leading wind energy companies, there have been no dramatic changes in windmill design for many years. But the cumulative effects of numerous small improvements have had a major impact on cost. We are reaping the benefits of 30 years of research in Europe, without have to make the same mistakes that they did, Mr Bergen says. In the 1950s and 60s, many people in the developed world felt passionately about the enormous disparities between developed and developing countries, and they believed the system of international trade shut out African, Asian, and South American producers who could not compete with multinational companies or who came from states that, for political reasons, were not trading with the West. The catchphrase trade not aid was used by church groups and trade unions early supporters of fair trade who also considered that international aid was either a pittance or a covert form of subjugation. 
These days, much fair trade does include aid, developed world volunteers offer their services, and there is free training for producers and their workers. The fins are the most distinctive features of a fish, composed of bony spines protruding from the body with skin covering them and joining them together, either in a webbed fashion, as seen in most bony fish, or more similar to a flipper, as seen in sharks. These usually serve as a means for the fish to swim. But it must be emphasized that the swimming movements are produced by the whole of the muscular body, and in only a few fish do the fins contribute any propulsive force. Their main function is to control the stability and direction of the fish. As water passes over its body, a fish uses its fins to thrust in the direction it wishes to go. Things do not improve but you struggle on thinking you should pull yourself together, perhaps things will ease off at work soon. A return visit to your doctor shocks you. This time the doctor, drawing on years of training and experience, diagnoses pneumonia. This means that you will need bed rest and a considerable time off work. The scenario is transformed. Although you still have the same symptoms, you no longer think that these are caused by pressure at work. You now have proof that you are ill. This is the result of the combination of your own subjective experience and the diagnosis of someone who has the status of a medical expert. You have a medically authenticated diagnosis and it appears that you are seriously ill. You know you are ill and have the evidence upon which to base this knowledge. Scientists have succeeded in copying the silk-producing genes of the golden orb weaver spider, and are using them to create a synthetic material which they believe is the model for a new generation of advanced biomaterials. The new material, biosilk, which has been spun for the first time by researchers at DuPont, has an enormous range of potential uses in construction and manufacturing. The attraction of the silk spun by the spider is a combination of great strength and enormous elasticity, which man-made fibers have been unable to replicate. On an equal weight basis, Spider silk is far stronger than steel, and it is estimated that if a single strand could be made about 10 m in diameter, it would be strong enough to stop a jumbo jet in flight. A third important factor is that it is extremely light. Like, share, subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for further updates.